click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends i welcome you all to this video we are with the chapter image enhancement into the frequency domain so far in this subject we have gone through the introduction to digital image processing the various digital image fundamentals we have been addressed the various image transforms have been taken into the chapter 3 then the image enhancement the very fundamental step in the digital image processing we started in the previous chapter for the spatial details into the spatial domain we can say and now from this chapter into the frequency domain so in this chapter earlier topics we have addressed like the Fourier transform and the frequency domain and next to that the Fourier transform of the sample data also we have addressed there now let us see the details of how exactly the function reconstruction from the sample data can be there so here we start with the term sampling here so the sampling is a very important block as we go for the conversion of the physical image into the digital image so basically whenever we obtain the information into the image form that it is a two dimensional information so it is a continuous type of the information hence we call it the physical image and by sampling and then the further quantization we are able to get it converted into the digital form here nowadays we are using all the images into the digital image with the advantages of the storage and the transmission and so lot here now how many samples we can obtain to make the minimization into the information loss because as we are getting converted from physical image to the digital image the advantages we are using for the storage that means the memory space that is required for the storage should be the minimum one in the minimum memory we want more and more information to be stored so for this case what should be the sampling rate and how many samples can be obtained with a minimum information loss is a very much concern point here so here let us take enough samples so that the reconstruction of the signal into the continuous form is possible so that is the solution to this particular question here now this comes with the band limited functions so a function whose spectrum is of finite duration is called as a band limited function so let us represent a band limited function in the form of a graphical representation here so here we take the two axes into the use on the horizontal axis we represent the frequency domain parameter u here and onto the vertical axis we represent the function by capital f as a function of this u here we have the curvature that extends from minus w to the plus w here so this gives us the representation of the maximum frequency here hence we can call this a band limited function whatever the information is there that is in the range minus w to plus w not beyond that hence band limited now there is a question whether all the functions are band limited or not the answer is of course no so here we have the representation of a function into the spatial domain small h of x represented here on the horizontal axis when x is taken we have such a step here having the amplitude 1 for the range of small x 0 to capital x when we get it converted into the frequency domain by the use of Fourier transform we get this spectrum and we represent the Fourier domain representation by capital H of u here so in this representation you see here the central beam is having the maximum information that range between minus 1 by capital X to plus 1 by capital X beyond that there are several lobes 
but these are not exactly equal to zero so this comes up to the infinity also hence the answer to the question whether all the functions are band limited or not the answer is no this is the example to prove this answer now band limited functions have infinite durations into the spatial domain so as they are limited into the frequency domain they are infinite into the spatial domain the previous example that we have seen that it was limited into the spatial domain but it was infinite into the frequency domain that is the case as we switch from spatial domain to that of the frequency domain so here it is again the representation for the first case that we have represented the band limited function between minus w to plus w representing capital f of u in frequency domain when get converted into the spatial domain representation by using the inverse fourier transform you can take here so it has infinite values onto the horizontal axis represented by small x for the function represented small f of x like this now the functions with finite duration into the spatial domain have infinite duration into the frequency domain so already we have shown it on the earlier slide now the function reconstruction from the sampled data we shall be discussing so here transform of the band limited function we show you here so the band limited function capital f of u has this particular nature in the frequency domain so here instead of u we have mu symbol so that we have from minus mu max to positive mu max and in between we have the information centered onto the origin marked with the zero here now the transform resulting from the critical sampling function can be obtained like this here so here this is the representation of the function so now we have minus mu max with the representation of minus 1 upon twice delta t so this is the representation with respect to the time domain converted to that of the frequency domain and u max has been obtained by 1 upon twice delta t the time durations here so this way we have the visualization of this particular function when the transform is after a critical sampling function so how much is required that much only when taken we obtain it now extracting one period from the previous figure of the transform of the band limited function using the ideal low pass filter we can do and by the next step we obtain like this so here the first figure gives you the information of the sampling with some arbitrary rate not exactly the critical one applying the low pass filter we get to the second step in the middle portion you can see the figure representing h of u having the time duration interval represented by delta capital t here now we have the representation into the frequency domain again so it is f of mu obtained by multiplication of this low pass filter function h of mu to the earlier function represented after sampling there so now let us take this example so in this example we have the under sampled function with the representation of the black dots they look like a sine wave having a frequency much lower than the frequency of the continuous signal here for the continuous signal represented with the solid line we have the time duration denoted by delta t here now very few samples if we take the sample signal looks like a sinusoid of the lower frequency here so that is the case now when we take about one dimensional function we multiply f of x with s of x that is a train of impulses so the picture real representation in the graph here you see here f of x we have represented in part a image s of x into the part c of the image having the interval between the pulses into the strain 
that it is denoted by delta x here. So when we have multiplication with the function here, we obtain the sampled function f of x. So this has been represented. So it is a multiplication s of x into f of x represented graphically here. Only the sample values into the discrete form, I must say, are obtained by this particular operation here. So in another hand, if you take DFT of this f of x into s of x, so we have to make the use of the convolution theorem. Now f of x into s of x in the spatial domain into the frequency domain is nothing but the frequency domain of f of x convolved with the frequency domain of s of u here. So here we have f of mu convolved with s of mu. So this results into the sampled function I must say. So here we have s of x f of x represented in the spatial domain that has direct shift into the frequency domain by the Fourier transform by s of mu having convolution with f of u here represented like this here. So reconstructing the original signal one dimensional f of x from its samples, we need to make isolation of a single period. So multiplication by a window, for example, capital G of u is a possible thing here. So G of u when multiplied to the convolution of S of u into F of u here, we obtain F of u like this onto the right hand you can see here. So G of u is a pulse for the duration minus w to plus w with the amplitude 1 here. Now after this step, we need to take the inverse Fourier transform. So inverse Fourier transform of the multiplication of g of u with this convolution result into obtaining the f of x onto the left hand side that has continuous values in the spatial domain for the horizontal axis represented by small x here. Now what is the effect of the interval delta x? So the large delta x if it would be that is very few samples if you have taken into consideration there will be the overlapping of the periods so this is the representation where we find the overlapping onto the right hand side here see here there it is the rarer representation of the samples into the spatial domain as we multiply s of x with the original function f of x so the lobes into the frequency domain have overlapping with each other. So those have been represented here at the two places symmetric to the vertical axis in the figure f. So but if the periods overlap, we cannot anymore isolate a single period here. So that is the difficulty while selecting delta x to be very much larger here. So on application of the window by g of u to select the single function here, the single lobe here, we obtain such a result here that has some unwanted things on both the sides of the vertical axis. Now if another case we go for that is selection of smaller values of delta x, the interval into the spatial domain representation after multiplication of the signal by the pulse train here, that is more number of samples if you take. So that time into the frequency domain, whatever the lobes we find corresponding to the information that are completely isolated from each other with a suitable margin here. So this time we should be able to select the central lobe having the highest information. Now how should we choose then the interval into the spatial domain for selection of the samples? So the center of the overlapped region is at u is equal to 1 upon twice delta x. So therefore, if you select like this for u is equal to 1 upon twice delta x, it will give you the complete information without any kind of 
loss and by avoiding this particular situation as represented into the figure f here now let us choose delta x as follows so 1 upon twice delta x greater than or equal to w or in another form delta x less than or equal to 1 upon twice w which is stated as the nyquist theorem we shall be able to reconstruct the samples the information from the sample data here so in this particular mathematical representation capital w is the maximum frequency of the f of x here so whatever you may have learned into the digital signal processing for one dimensional signal that is applicable to the image processing as well being a two dimensional signal here so the reconstruction with the sync filter we show here with the help of the diagram here so on to the left hand side we have the sample data and by having a reconstruction the form of the function we find on to the right hand side so right from 0 to 7 samples we have represented here the continuous waveform the continuous form of the signal we have traced here now reconstruction with the taint type of the filter see the filter shape here gives for the same kind of the signal the reconstruction into the continuous domain form but as the shape of the filter is like this we have the straight slopes for the reconstructed signal that are not exactly like the original signal now reconstruction with the help of the box filter that is of nearest neighbor type gives us such a stepped output signal here this is also not exactly like the original signal but it is helpful to get at what particular amplitude levels the information could be there now i hope this much is sufficient to address the function reconstruction from the sample data i have already get it cleared that whatever you have seen for the one dimensional signal will be applicable to the two dimensional signal also so by the next lecture we continue our chapter image enhancement into the frequency domain with the next topic titled aliasing into the images i hope you enjoy the subject digital image processing along with the theoretical knowledge and the practical exposure in the matlab environment so for more information and the more knowledge of the subject you can subscribe to ekeda channel thank you